If you have a Bible with you today, I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 28, and you can turn there with me. During our update, we handed you a Christian faith response card. Did you see it? I hope you took one and didn't just send it down the road because I need your response. If you don't have a card in your hand, you can go on your phone and just text the word survey to the number 21777. Just survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y, to the number 21777. You'll see this card online on your phone. And uh, here's what I need. I need you to tell me what I should be teaching in the next weeks. You know, one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, how, how do you know what to teach? How do you come up with messages? How do you prepare your sermons? And, and, and so I need you to tell me because I don't know. What message would you like to hear uh, about what the Bible says or things you're interested in? Check it on there or check it on your phone and, and send it to me. What's your next step in your spiritual journey, your walk with God? Check it on there. We'll do things to help you in that walk with God in your spiritual journey. Now you say, why are you doing this on Easter? Because I'm not going to see you again until Christmas. Okay, well, most of you, I'm going to see you again. But I need to know. I need you to respond to me. If everybody, and I'm going to read them. Wendy and I are going to sit down. We're going to go through all of these, and we're going to prepare things for you because of this. So I, I hope that you will take a moment. I did it myself. Less than one minute, I was done. So do it. Matthew chapter 28, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began, to dawn. Why do we have church on Sunday? Because Jesus rose on Sunday morning and the church gathered together on Sunday. The Old Testament is Saturday. The New Testament is Sunday, the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Think of how they were feeling. Mary and the other Mary, they're broken, they're shattered, they're hopes are gone. They're the man who fed them, healed them, loved them, lifted them, encouraged them, empowered them is dead and lying in the tomb. And so they went to the grave to visit him. I wonder if they had memories. He said after three days, could it be true? Could it actually happen? Could one rise from the dead? I wonder what thoughts filled her mind? By the way, the first person to know that Jesus rose from the dead was a woman. And the first one to share the story of the resurrection was a woman. So any of the brothers who keep complaining about women in leadership, y'all need to plug in. Because the Lord <laughs> picked a woman first. Brothers were home sleeping or something, had a hangover. Depressed, scared, I don't know what those brothers were doing. But there they were at the tomb, and behold, a great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled back the stone and sat on it, and his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, and the guards shook for fear. When you see angels, even the soldiers shake for fear. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And that started it. Man, they ran back. They told the disciples. The disciples were waiting. Jesus shows back up in his glorified body. He began to teach them about the kingdom of God and this New Testament life, this new covenant life for 40 days before he ascended into heaven. Now today, over 2,000 years later, we're celebrating that day. We're singing all over the world. In every nation, someone is shouting about the resurrection. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amazing. It's amazing. And the resurrection tells us four things that I want to share with you this morning. It will only take me a moment because I'm talking fast. The resurrection tells us four things. Number one, it tells us that Jesus is the Messiah. 
He is our Savior. He is King of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. He is the one, right? Jesus is the one. They question, they ask, are you the one? And, and Jesus would say, who do men say that I am? And they would say, well, some think you're John the Baptist. Some think you're a prophet. Some think you're that. And today, we're doing the same thing in our secular world, right? Well, Jesus is a good teacher. Well, he had some nice ideas. Well, he was a nice guy. Well, he was a good person. Christianity's okay. One of the great religions. No, this is not one of. He is the one. He is the one and the only, and he is the Messiah. He is the Savior. And the Bible said, I am the truth, the way, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. The resurrection establishes who Jesus is is. In Philippians chapter 2, it said, God has highly exalted him and given him the name, not just any name, not just a name, the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When he rose from the dead, it established that reality. It settled that truth. Number two, the resurrection tells us he's the one and only one who can save us from our sin, from our failure, from our fear, from death. He's the one and only one. John chapter 3, you know the verse, verse 16, God so loved the world that he picked one of his seven sons. Hmm? Is that how you read your Bible? Have you ever read it? It's an amazing thing. God so loved the world that he picked one of his three sons. Huh? Is that in the Bible? No, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He couldn't pick another man. He had no other son. There couldn't be a human person. Angels couldn't take that place. There was only one in the universe that could do what Jesus did, and he stepped up and said, I'll do it. And he came for you. He died for you. He spent three days in hell for you. And he rose from the dead for you. Think of it. No one else could do that. You all, we all have our own issues. We're not going to solve humanity's issues. But Jesus could do it. Angels couldn't do it. They were created to serve God, do what God said. They weren't in that position. But the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, gave himself. He said, you can't take my life. No one takes my life, but I'll lay it down so that I can take it up again. And when he rose from the dead, he was saying, this is what I said I was going to do. This is what I came to do. This is what it's all about. I overcame death, hell, and the grave for you. Number three, the resurrection says Jesus overcame death to give us life. The resurrection proves death is defeated and life is victorious. Hey, some of you don't know yet. Good is stronger than evil. Good wins. Love overcomes hatred. Healing overcomes sickness. Life overcomes death. The positive will win against the negative. Some of you keep wondering. You keep thinking bitterness is winning. Anger is winning. Uh, frustration is winning. Depression is winning. Sadness is winning. No. Jesus won. Life won. He crushed the head of the serpent, and he overcame death, hell, and the grave. So every day, you and I can get up and say, hey, 
good is stronger. Love is stronger. Healing is stronger. Prosperity is stronger. The blessing of the Lord is stronger than the curses of this world. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap right there. Jesus overcame death. And number four, the resurrection speaks today to tell you he's alive. He's alive and he's with you. He walks with you and he talks with you and he helps you and he lifts you and he wants you to live this abundant life. You're not alone. You're not on your own. You say, nobody cares. He does. You say, nobody understands. He does. You, you say, nobody's with me. He is. The resurrection is reminding you he came back for you. He came back for you. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he went to hell. But he came back for you. And he walks with you and talks with you. All you got to do is give him a little space. Right? Just give him a little time. Just give him an opportunity. Spend a moment in prayer. Take a minute to read his words. Show up once a week and worship in his house. He's there. He rose from the dead to be with you. So let's give some place for God in our life. Do I have to come to church? No, but it's not so bad. Do I have to pray? No, but it'll help. Do, do I have to worship? No, but if you do, that life of God will lift you up, strengthen you, help you every day. The resurrection speaks to you today. He's with you to bring you abundant life. Hebrews chapter 7 has said, He ever lives to make intercession for us. I, I love that thought. He ever lives to pray for me, to support me, to help me, to heal me, to guide me. He ever lives. He's at the right hand of the Father right now, talking to the Father about you and me and all the other believers and all the other children of God on the planet. He ever lives. You say, how can he care about everybody? He's God. How can he know about everybody? He's God. How can he pray for everybody? He's God, and he lives for you. Jesus said in John chapter 10, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. As we close today, I just want to challenge this thought. Are you believing for abundant life, or have you accepted mediocre life? I'm not sure, but I've been told mediocre is the worst kind of ochre. I don't know what ochre is, but mediocre is not good. And yet that's where most people live, right? They don't believe for that abundant life, that superior quality, that super abundant quantity. They accept second best and third best and fourth best because they don't know that Jesus lives the resurrection speaks so that you can have abundant life. Let's go for that. Let's believe for that. Let's gather in his house and express our faith for that. Let's read his word and believe that it's true for us. Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. I'm not settling for pain. I'm going for healing. I'm not settling for poor. I'm going for prosperity. I'm not settling for the curse. I'm going for the blessing. I'm not settling for sadness. I'm going for the joy. I'm not settling for second best. I'm going for his best. Come on, time to start living your best life. Abundant life.